This podcast contains themes that are unsuitable for younger listeners and parental guidance is advised. We've got to keep moving on together. This is where I was in the cockpit with Chi Chi and uh, we were finally on our way in full hyperspace heading towards Nibiru, the home world of the Anunnaki. I was getting really excited because it's been a long time since we've been into a proper full-blown battle and it was going to be an epic win or it'll be a monumental failure. Time will only tell. We just hoped that we'd be successful in rescuing Josh and not only that but caused some considerable damage, absolute damage to the Anunnaki Empire even if it was just enough to uh, damage their morale and then also show the whole of the uh, galaxy that they were not unstoppable, that they were not overlords and that they just had the benefit of being around a lot longer than anyone else and building up their technology before anyone else. We just wanted to give that emperor a massive bloodied nose and embarrass the living shit out of him in front of the whole galaxy and it was likely to happen. Even if we weren't successful, they will get the bloody nose that they deserved. And I just couldn't wait. I now had my power-ups. I could use their weaponry. But unfortunately, Josh would have to make do with my mace. Because Josh just doesn't have the ability to use the weapons. He hasn't got the wristband that the Greys gave me. And they only gave me the one. Josh will just be like me. A little frustrated, but happy to be free. And as soon as we got Josh, we would get back to Earth as soon as we physically could. Although, it wouldn't be straight away. And the reason for that is, where do you think they're going to go straight away to? They're going to come straight back to Earth to see if we're actually stupid enough. Now we weren't stupid. Even going through hyperspace, it'd still be a while before we got to Nibiru. Well, to the Nibiru system, shall we say. Now, that was the problem. But it's one that we could just deal with. It's just a couple of days as opposed to weeks upon weeks. If the hyperdrive was still in the uh, rotten state it was before we had it repaired, Chi Chi took my hand and placed it onto the uh, controls. She was showing me what to do and not only was I uh, learning how to pilot the ship at the same time, but I was spending some quality time with Chi Chi because it just felt like this could possibly be the last opportunity we had to have to be together in the short time that we've known each other. And that would be a tragedy if this was to end before it even began. And all I could hope for is some time after this with Chi Chi. And that hope is strong. It's a strong hope to get you through a situation that you're about to go through. Especially before you go into a real brutal battle. There was a load of beeping from the uh, computer's navigational computer. And all these images started to flash up. The images were of spaceships in the Nibiru system and their exact location. We had come into sensor range of the Nibiru system whilst in hyperspace, which was good because now we knew exactly what we was up against. You had the hypergate completely mobbed by uh, spaceships. They were protecting that. They knew that we would be there. They just didn't know when. And they were stupid enough to assume that we would be going through the hypergate. After all, they did know that our hyperdrive was damaged, but they didn't know if we'd have it repaired or not. So they just covered that base. And then there's loads of ships scattered throughout the system at regular intervals, so, at, so we'd probably cross into a sensor net. And if we could see them, they could probably see us very, very soon. Chi Chi seems to think that we wouldn't be spotted until the last possible moment because we're that smaller ship and we're not emitting that much of a power signature as we've got most things running on a, a minimum power. The only thing that's running fast is the hyperdrive. We could be a shooting star for all they knew. We could be a comet. But hey, who knows? We just had to be ready. We had to be ready to fight. There's even more bleeping. And there we go. They'd actually spotted us. There are ships coming towards us. Chi Chi hit the alarm. And I moved to the back seat with after weapons controls whilst Anna took helm and the man in black came onto the starboard side weapons computer and we started to prepare for battle. 
I charged all my weapons on my side, as did the man in black. You had the girls up front who uh, charged the front weapons, and both myself and the man in black were in, also in charge of our section of that rear weapons. We were completely armed to the teeth. We were ready to go. Weapons charged up, torpedoes charged up, the whole full shebang. We just had to wait, because we couldn't go any faster. We just had to wait. How long to uh, they intercept us, Chi Chi said uh, the man in black. Chi Chi had a look. It looks about 10 minutes or so. Okay, 10 minutes to live, 10 minutes to die. And I'd rather li we live, guys, so let's get these motherfuckers dead. Yeah. What's the status of our shields, said the man in black. Shields 100%, said Anna. We're ready to go. We are fully ready to go. And as soon as they come, we're going to drop out of hyperspace and uh, start launching our attack. Okay. Okay, I said, right, so what's the plan then? Chi Chi uh, spun her chair around to look at me. The plan is you kill everyone that comes into your uh, scanner range. Don't relent. Don't be a pussy and uh, drop the ball. Just go and shoot anything that's not us. Doesn't matter if they're Anunnaki or not. Any, anything that comes across your scanner, you shoot it. You shoot it all to hell in case it's a sentry gun or anything else that they've got waiting for us. And if it's someone uh, that shouldn't be there, then that's their own goddamn fault. Chi Chi span around. Now, get ready. And I advise you guys put your seatbelts on because I'm going to turn the artificial gravity off. Why are you going to turn the artificial gravity off, I said. Well... If I turn the artificial gravity off, then that saves more power, which I can divert straight into the shields. And when I say some power, I mean a lot of our power, because a lot of our power is wasted on artificial gravity. And if I can channel that power straight into the shield straight away, then we ain't going to deplete our shield power anytime soon. It's one thing that they'd not really expect, because it's not really done. Everyone tends to uh, do that as soon as their systems are fucked and uh, to be honest I'd rather be concentrating on uh, not getting blown up and avoid everyone's laser beams to be pretty honest and plus with your artificial gravity off your body's not going to be tumbling around it'll just be uh, weightless in the environment okay now you just want to be rooted to your seat and that's it okay so artificial gravity is off now Chi Chi and Anna's hair both started to raise it into the air as did some necklaces and other random shit that's knocking around pens and paper the light is all just floating around the cabin now for the stupid reason of people forgetting to just stow shit away so now not only will we be out spinning rapidly avoiding laser fire and missiles and torpedoes we're now going to be uh, having to avoid pencils and pads and everything just flying in our faces and even a coffee mug I noticed oh great great okay well, we're dropping out of hyperspace now unlike normal times with the gravity on and the hyperdrive uh, disengaging you could feel a shudder because there was no artificial gravity I just couldn't feel the uh, hyperdrive shutting down all I could feel was a little tug on my chair's harness and that was about it we'd come to a complete standstill get ready they're about to come in now and as soon as she said now all these ships all these spaceships just started to drop out of hyperspace but we'd open fired before they could even do anything as soon as spaceships left their hyperspace windows we were starting to take them out straight away there's explosions there's lasers coming towards us Chi Chi was amazing on that throttle she was just spinning around and going in directions that I just didn't know existed. She was amazing, an amazing pilot. And Anna was just firing rapidly on the uh, forward guns whilst the man in black and I were firing from the sides and the aft. It was a brutal, brutal black battle. Eventually, the, uh, there was no more ships coming through uh, hyperspace windows and we were just left with a handful of them that were just on our tails and on our asses and we couldn't shake them. And they kept avoiding our missile locks and our uh, laser cannons. But we were keeping them at bay. Chi Chi uh, engaged the hyperdrive one more time. Bam! We left them damaged but alive. And we carried on towards Nibiru. Right. Right, so that so they're dealt with. How many more sensors say that we got? Um, 
All of them, I guess. What do you mean, all of them? Yeah, I think the Emperor's got everyone there. Why? Why do you say that? Well, um, he's obviously called for reinforcements for the Hyperlight Gate. What? How many? All of them. All I... It's better to ask me how many spaces there are in between the ships than there is uh, ships. There's that goddamn many. Really? Oh, fuck. What are we going to do? Well, it's a bit late now. We're just going to have to keep punching holes through and uh, keep jumping into hyperspace and out of hyperspace. What? Can you do that? That's another reason why I shut down power-hungry uh, systems. So we've got enough power to just quickly divert into the hyperdrive, into the shields. Shields are still at optimum. Hyperdrive's still working uh, fully. And every time we punch a hole, we're going to go into hyperspace. Okay, that's a bit weird, but don't you have to put coordinates in so you don't end up for a, going for a star? Well, said Chi Chi, we're not going to go that far anyways. Uh, it's quite literally start and stop, start, stop, start, stop. As long as I've got my finger on the on and off buttons, we can just toggle in and out and uh, cause a little bit of mayhem. Well, that's a bit of an interesting plan. Oh shit, they're firing at us. Chi Chi uh, jumped out of hyperspace and started darting in and out whilst we carried on firing. There was lasers, there was missiles, there torpedoes going everywhere. We took some damage. The shields are still holding though. I could see steam and sparks flying across the cockpit whilst Chi Chi was then going back in and out of hyperspace. Well, fucking hell, that's insane, I said. Look at that. We just caused a lot of damage to all these ships by going through hyperspace. Don't worry about that, said Chi Chi. I'll talk to you about that later on. But right now we've got pressing moments. At the moment, Anna, Anna I need you to take over pressing the buttons. Just randomly press in and out of hyperspace. Now, please, go. Shit, my fucking wrist, you're saying. I've got carp and tunnel from keep pressing those buttons. Right, okay. I'm on those sticks. And she kept darting in and out, in and out, in and out. Rotating spinning around in different ways that I just didn't know existed and at one point I could feel my lunch coming out Jesus Christ Jesus Christ I, ha I wish I didn't have any of that cheese chowder earlier on from the replicator oh it, it feels like it's going up and both the uh, man in black and I were constantly firing shit we've run out of torpedoes on the aft side said the, uh, said the old man oh shit so have I I've run out of uh, port torpedoes so have I on the starboard Shit, we're down to laser cannons only. Chi Chi, you need to get us out of here. We're, we're fucked. We're fucked. No, she said. We're getting in. Don't worry about that. We are getting in. Anna, get ready. I'm taking over the uh, hyperdrive controls now. So Anna went back onto the forward guns and she still had a couple of missiles left as we're smashing the shit out of this fleet. Chi Chi was still going in and out of hyperspace as well as twiddling in and out through all these gaps that she could find and every time she went into hyperspace the uh, shockwave damaged more, of, more and more of these spaceships. It was a beautiful sight of carnage, of absolute carnage and how have they not managed to pick us off I don't know. It must be down to Chi Chi's awesome piloting and audacious hyperdrive plan. Wow, absolutely wow. Then all I could see in the uh, scanner was the planet. We were getting closer and closer and closer. Chi Chi went into hyperspace as we hit the atmosphere and we had lost them. We arrived at some other part of the planet and there was nobody there. Chi Chi sat us down and we shut down all the power, all the engines, everything. Chi Chi landed the spaceship, which is now full of dings and dents and the shields are semi-fucked, but the hyperdrive is still functional. She set us down and there was no one there. As soon as we landed, she switched everything off, all the systems off, so we were not emitting any power source. What are you doing? I said. Well, I turned everything off so we didn't leave a power signature. Okay. Why are you whispering to Chi Chi? Well, it seems like the right thing to do. Well, they're not going to be able to hear us, said Chi Chi. They can't hear us. All we have to do is just let the spaceship cool down and we're going to uh, leave the spaceship alone and we're going to start making tracks because it won't be long before they find the spaceship and even if they don't, it's uh, not really in much of a condition to fly. It looks like we have to bodge it back together in some certain places. What do you mean? Well, the damage report computer is all covered in red lines and red dots and red circles. That's bad, isn't it? I said. Yeah. She'll fly again, she just needs a lot of work, but we're on the Biru, so we might have to just say goodbye to my lovely spaceship and nick a new one. Nick a new one? Well, yeah, do you think I paid for this, said Chi Chi? No. Of course you didn't pay for it, of course you heisted it. 
she, she smiled at me. She came, she undid her harness from her seat, got up, kissed me on the head, go and get your shit together, we're leaving in a few minutes. Okay, I said. I undid my harness as did Anna and the old man, and we got our stuff together, ready for a ground assault. Thank you for listening. Please come back next week for the next episode. If you've enjoyed this podcast, why not check out our other podcast, A Tribute to Men That Hate Their Jobs, which is a brutal but witty portrayal of working a job you hate. In this podcast, there are themes explored in which happy workers simply wouldn't understand unless they listen to these cautionary tales from a man that lost his ideal job because of the global pandemic. Be warned that this podcast contains strong and offensive language that some listeners may not want to hear. In addition, this podcast is not recommended for younger audiences. All our podcasts are available on YouTube. Just search for the Master X Media podcast channel. In addition, you can also find our podcasts on Amazon Music, Red Circle Podcasts, Stitcher and Spotify. We also have another YouTube channel called The X Review. This is a review and reaction channel. Not only is it on YouTube, but it is also on Brand YouTube, BitChute and Rumble. You can also find us on Facebook, Gab, Twitter and Parlour. All the links are in the description below.